Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a very powerful team featuring physical Life Orb Evoltal, as well as Screech, Regieleki, and Choice Scarf Kyogre. This team was built by one of my favorite team builders in Sword and Shield, TSL Tang, who pretty much always finishes in the top 30 of every ranked season, and they always come up with really innovative stuff. I think we've basically featured all of their teams uh, in the last like year and a half or so, and I, I think that their teams are so strong because they not only feature like some fun twists on conventional Pokemon, um, but they also are just consistent really across the board. And so as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps linked in the description below. And if you enjoy watching, please share support by leaving a like, I would really appreciate it. I was just talking about consistency and actually what like basically guided me towards this team is that I was like practicing with a bunch of different teams for Road to Ranked. And honestly, I was just struggling to learn some of the compositions and uh, I was struggling to make them work. And so, you know, went on a kind of a rough losing streak and I was like, okay, like, you know, I want to break out of it. And my advice is always to step away from the game for a little bit, but also try out a new team. And, you know, I, I just always knew like TSL Tang's team are always just super consistent across the board. So, and I, you know, I was planning on featuring this. So I played a game or two with it and I was like, okay, yeah, this, this has a lot of uh, just fast paced uh, potential to, to win games very quickly on the ladder. And so let's first of all talk about Evil Tall, right? Physical Evil Tall. What's the deal with it? When people fight against Evil Tall, they typically expect it to be bulky with Assault Vest. And, you know, those sets actually run Foul Play and Sucker Punch as well. But Sucker Punch, for example, doesn't do nearly as much damage. It's, you're only using it really to, like, finish things off or maybe uh, hit Calyrex Shadow Rider. But otherwise, it's not like an actual, like, very scary attack to go up against. And then Foul Play, obviously, it doesn't matter what your EV investment on Evil Tall is, but it's important for physical Evil Tall because when you Dynamax, you have a base 130 max darkness, whereas uh, if you use max darkness from Sucker Punch, it's only base 120. And so the idea behind Evil Tall is that people expect it to be bulky AV or Life Orb with like Oblivion Wing, Heat Wave, and Dark Pulse and Protect. That's like the most common Evil Tall set that I've really run into on High Ladder recently. And so physical Evil Tall basically is a strong deviation from that, where people always expect Evil Tall to be special or like bulky AV. Uh, this is like, nope, I'm physical. I'm going to hit you for a lot of damage very quickly. And the beauty of this is that people all like, in order to try to get around Evil Tall, will try to either lower its special attack or set up a light screen or increase their special defense. And with the combination of Screech and like your max moves, you can actually just one shot even a lot of Dynamax Pokemon, right? And a lot of common restricted mons in the format have a slightly better like special defense than defense. Uh, and a lot of Pokemon like running Assault Vest at the moment too, like Kyogre or Reshiram, for example. And so Physical Evil Tall is very nice to get around those. And also is one of those Pokemon that can like literally just win you the game in a turn if you get the Screech combo off. Because Screech into a max darkness can actually one shot like a lot of Dynamax Pokemon, which players generally don't expect, right? Uh, the other advantage of Evil Tall in the format is that there's still so much Grim Snarl running around, as well as other prankster Pokemon, right? But Grim specifically can't touch Evil Tall with Thunder Wave or Scary Face or Fake Tears or any of its support moves because Evil Tall is Dark type. So the general idea behind this team is to move before your opponent can and just you know overwhelm them with offense. Uh, the Evil Tall actually isn't like like Evil Tall itself it doesn't have the highest base speed, but when you combine it with Electro Web Pressure from Aleki as well as Tailwind, which you see the Evil Tall has, as well as Max Airstream, uh, it can really start outpacing your opponent, right? Uh, and Evil Tall is actually pretty like naturally bulky, so you can take a hit or two uh, and still you know survive. And then the thing is, you take a hit, but then you get a Max Airstream, and then you like subsequently outspeed your opponent. That's really important. So. Uh, yeah, uh, Evil Tall here, really the ma main Dynamax option with this team, but Kyogre, Aleki, Ensign, and Rillaboom can all max depending on the right situation. Choice Scarf Kyogre here, Screech Aleki, as we've talked about, we've featured this before with Zacian, but I think this with the Dynamax Evil Tall is an even stronger combination. Uh, Chopal Berry on Incineroar here, so it gives you a slightly better matchup into Zacian and taking Sacred Swords if they try to predict you, you know, to switch in. Miracle Seed Rillaboom, so the Rillaboom's a little bit more offensive rather than Assault Vest, but I value the Miracle Seed here, uh, or the Miracle Set. Because if you ran AV, you would just have Protect on two Pokemon, and yeah, that can be a little bit nerve-wracking. Uh, and then finally, Citrus Amoongus with Pollen Puff. So Pollen Puff can you know be used to heal your partners up, and with Citrus Berry, like it's actually pretty difficult to knock out Amoongus. The nice thing about this Amoongus is you can switch it in, take a max move, Protect, and then switch it out, and that's like three turns of your, of your opponent's Dynamax essentially. So a lot of good leads here: Aleki Kyogre, Aleki Evil Tall, Insin Kyogre, Insin Evil Tall, Rillaboom Evil Tall, uh, just to name a couple. But uh, yeah, I, I think that. 
This is a slight deviation from what players expect from Evil Tall, and it's the first time I've used a physical Evil Tall that's this powerful. So thanks to TSL Tang for the team. Thank you to you all as always for watching. Uh, question of the day, the Indianapolis Regional Championships actually start tomorrow, and I'll be commentating at twitch.tv slash Pokemon. So I'm curious what your predictions for the tournament are. What do you expect to do well? Who do you expect to do well? Let me know in the comment section below, and let's get started. Wow, first game here, and we're up against Evil Tall Reshiram, Lando T Torkoal, Tapu Fini, and Indidi Male. It's a very cool team. I don't think I've really ever remembered uh, fighting Evil Tall Reshiram, and Indidi Male here is also interesting as it can trick room as well as imprison. And then Torkoal is there to you know boost the damage output of the fire type attacks from Reshiram presumably. So what do we want to go with here? Kyogre's like good damage output, uh, but we have to deal with Torkoal. Um, uh, Moongus is interesting here, but it's so weak into the majority of my opponent's team. Is Incineroar really that helpful though? Because I might want Rillaboom just for damage output into Feeny and terrain control against Indidi. I guess Instant can parting shot. Like, I'm not opposed to leading a Leki Evil Tall here, Kyogre in the back, and then one of Vincent or Rillaboom is the final one. I guess Vincent also resists some of Torkoal's attacks. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like, Feeny's not that hard to deal with here because we've got a Leki as well as um, physical Evil Tall. If it were special Evil Tall, maybe I'd think a little bit more about Rillaboom, but it's not, so we'll see. I am hoping to... I mean, Evil Tone Reshiram is actually like a pretty bulky restricted core here, which is pretty scary. Reshiram and Indy, okay. So, Indy mailed... Sets up the terrain. Um, honestly, <laughs> turn one, I think the play I want to make is actually just Screech into Reshiram and Max Darkness it. That feels really strong here, to be honest. Uh, the only thing is, like, maybe my opponent sets up Trick Room with Indy D, so I could also double up onto Indy D on turn 1 for a KO, then go for the Screech play on turn 2. I do struggle a little bit against Trick Room, in my opinion. So, okay, I'm honestly down for that. Thunderbolt, Dynamax, and... Um, do I need an airstream here? I think we're fine just going for darkness. Okay, so I'm gonna double up onto Indy because I think Sash Indy Witch Trick Room here could be a problem. So, the tempting thing is to obviously knock out Reshiram, but let's say your Assault Vest, or sorry, Assault Vest Reshiram doesn't matter, but let's say you're a bulky Reshiram and you can actually, like, I don't know, your max HP. I don't know the damage calc from. Uh, minus two defense, max darkness. I would think it's a KO, but even if it's a KO onto Dynamax Reshiram and like you get Trick Room up. Oh, they don't max either. Okay, I'll take it. Cool, so we'll just knock out NDD pretty cleanly here. The only downside is now maybe they go for a blue flare onto the Regieleki, and then if you get a burn, then that would actually, you know, KO me through Focus Sash. Special Defense Drop's also valuable for Kyogre's Water Spouts later on. Okay, it's just Earth Power. Cool. That's not a bad turn at all, then, in my opinion. Basically, because the Pokemon we're using are relatively speedy, like, Regieleki and Choice Scarf Kyogre are terrible under Tailwind. Or, sorry, under Trick Room. So I just don't really value that very much, right? Uh, and if they get Trick Room up, then I feel like I'm just not going to get very much damage with any of my Pokemon at all. Okay, so they bring out Torkoal. Now it's time for the Screech play. So 85% of the time, this works out absolutely brilliantly for us. So I'm just gonna go for Screech onto Reshiram and go for a Max Darkness. This is higher base power. I would expect Reshiram to Dynamax this turn and then you can go for, you know, Max Flare onto Evil's Hall and then Torkoal can go for a spread type attack, Heat Wave, Burning Jealousy, Eruption. Although Eruption would be a little bit risky here because, you know, you'd be afraid of Evil Tall attacking you. And Torkoal actually switches out into Evil Tall. Alright, I mean, if this Screech hits, I'm pretty sure we just win because then I win the Weather War, so that puts Kyogre in a fantastic position. So I don't know if we one-shot here, but we'll see. They are going to Dynamax, yeah. 
I wonder what Indy was going for, but the thing is, like with Indy Mill, you're pretty much always running Expandy Force in Prison Trick Room, and then you have a fourth. And I just know I'm faster than my opponent with most of my Pokemon here, right? So I might as well take advantage of the speed. The only awkward thing here is I feel like my fourth Pokemon option was, like, didn't really have a good one between all of them. Uh, we do miss Screech, unfortunately. Okay. It's a little bit disappointing. Oh yeah, you, it's definitely a one-hit KO there, but that's okay, honestly. I'm just sad, I, you know, we didn't get the one-hit KO, but you can see there, like, we had an 85% chance to essentially win the game immediately and, like, make my opponent's Dynamax literally useless, right? So, Max Flare and Tevil Tall, and that's, like, an okay amount of damage, but it's really not that bad. So, minus one special defense. I can T-Bolt, obviously, into Evil Tall. T-Bolt, and... Uh, it might be a little bit better to airstream here, just to ensure that I outspeed Evil Tall. We'll see a Rush Ram like Max Guards. A lot of Rush Rams are Assault Vested though, so if you're AV here, then you have no way around this, other than, I don't know, maybe a Crit Sucker Punch onto my Evil Tall. If you're like a Life Orb Evil Tall. And their Evil Tall just protects. Cool. I just wanted to get the Screech combo off so badly, but unfortunately that's the one downside of Screech, right? It's not 100% accurate. Really cool Restricted Duel for my opponent here, though. Um, but ultimately, I feel like their support mons in NDD and Torkoal just aren't really giving them that much value. And this is exactly why I focus so hard on denying Trick Room on turn 1, because it was tempting to get the knockout on Tereshiram, but if we get that KO, especially because my opponent was really smart and didn't Dynamax on turn 1, so if we take that knockout but they don't Dynamax, then they can bring out Evil Tall. They're going to be faster than us under Trick Room, most likely, and then it gets a little bit more awkward. And then it's like Kyogre with Choice Scarf under Trick Room isn't exactly the most appealing option, so yeah. Uh, with Kyogre in the back now, we should have this locked up, more or less. Um, you're also at minus one special defense, and the Psychic Terrain is up, so you can't even Sucker Punch Aleki. Earlier I alluded to Evil Tall Sucker Punching Evil Tall, um, and that actually still works despite Psychic Terrain being up, because Evil Tall's not grounded. So here I'm down to just Thunderbolt into their Evil Tall. That might just KO, and honestly, I'm actually down to Tailwind here to ensure, like, then Incineroar can also outpace my opponent. Uh, they do go for the correct play, which is opting for a double protect here, but they unfortunately don't get it. So T-Bolt here. Wow, that's beautiful. Actually just gets the one-hit KO. Uh, this should also highlight the strength of Aleki plus Evil Tall, right? Because, like, by getting that special defense drop, um, Aleki can actually deal pretty significant damage to things that don't resist it or are immune to it. Okay, Heat Wave actually misses, but obviously Kyogre at this point just wins the game. I don't know if Tailwind was really appropriate there, but in my head I was like, okay, with Tailwind, then I can outspeed their Evil Tall with Incineroar. So even if you get the double protect off, okay, I just bring out Kyogre, Incin. Um, Psychic Terrain is still up for a turn too, so uh, you can't like Sucker Punch Kyogre. Then I bring out Incin, Incin just clicks Fake Out into Evil Tall, Water Spout, and then, yeah. We probably didn't need it, to be honest, because I don't know if like moving first with Incineroar actually changes anything in this matchup, but yeah. You could see the strength of um, the physical evil toll in this one, right? As if that were Assault Vest Reshiram, I do so much less damage with evil toll, right? Like a significantly less damage. And I probably don't get a two-hit KO onto it even with Life Orb. But because we had the uh, physical variant instead, we were able to knock out Reshiram relatively easily. So I think, you know, as I mentioned when covering this team, one thing that's really important is just moving before your opponent. And that's why, like, I really don't like going up against Trick Room. Uh, and I really don't like when my opponent gets, like, speed control over me, right? Uh, and since you already have some really fast options, like Regilecki and Choice Scarf Kyogre, generally, you'll be naturally faster than them, so your opponent will have to work to, like, outpace you, essentially. And, yeah, in this game, like, I, you know, Evil Tall itself was just incredible. Like, there wasn't anything that really threatened it damage-wise uh, with, like, a super effective hit. And so, yeah, Reshiram Evil Tall, like, not exactly the most common restricted duel, but a very interesting one, and that team had a lot of cool stuff. So, yeah. Either way, though, uh, you know, Glad to show off the power of physical elect or physical evil tall, I should say. So let's just keep things going. Okay, next match here, and it's a pretty classic Palkia Calyrex Ice Rider team. So basically the thing with these compositions, one of the big questions is always like what item is the Calyrex? It could be Lumberry, it could be weakness policy. Uh, a lot of items that you can run on it. 
Kyogre lead is okay, but I mean, it's obviously pretty weak in Apalkia. Like, I feel like Amoongus gives us a lot of value here with Spore if we can get one off with it. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I get value from Kyogre here. Because if you're my opponent, you can look to set up Trick Room, obviously. Insin, Palkia. And uh, I guess Incineroar being able to intimidate me also isn't great, is it? Insin, Palkia, Insin, Porygon are both problems there. Kyogre Amoongus is actually interesting to me, I think. Because, like, I pressure with Spore on one spot, and then pressure with Water Spout with the other. Obviously, I want Evil Tom on the back. I'd love to lead a Lucky Evil Tall here, but... I just don't think I can really get away with getting a one-hit KO onto something that, like, is really critical early game. Mm, I'll bring Insane in the back. I, I think the matchup against Palkia here is somewhat subpar, though. And by not bringing the Rillaboom, that might punish me a little bit further. My hesitance in bringing Rillaboom is that it obviously has such a bad matchup in, like, Calyrex Ice Rider. And even Palkia, like, if you're Dynamax, you can just max Wormwind me, and Grassy Glide doesn't do that much to you. They go with the Lecky Palkia. This is a great lead by them, in my opinion. Mmm... Because you outpace the Kyogre right now with Aleki. Hmm. You know I'm faster. I'm mainly curious how much speed investment Palkia has. Okay, we are plus special defense, so do I expect Life Orb Max Wormwind to KO? Not really, to be honest. Like, I, I want to Origin Pulse here and just Spore on turn 1. If you're my opponent, like, you obviously are wary of um, Rage Powder. So they just go for T-Bolt. That's a good play by them, obviously. Mm. But having pressure with Spore here is at least decent. What's a better lead I could have had against Palkia Aleki? Maybe leading Rillaboom plus something? Okay, they go for Volt Switch. I'm generally okay with that because they didn't Dynamax Palkia, so this should be a free Spore onto it unless they're like Lumberried. And they bring out Calyrex? Wow, I'll take that. That's fantastic in my opinion. We don't miss Origin Pulse. I'm literally like holding my breath right now. Ah. <laughs> uh... Why why do I say these things? It happens. Yeah, they went for Trick Room. Okay. Uh, it could be worse at the end of the day, so I can't complain that much. But I honestly think if we hit... They're actually buried? It's L Lumberry Palkia? Bruh. That's wild. Okay. <laughs> That's a tech. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because it makes you so much stronger against Amoongus, but that's wild. Um, okay. Now, you can Dynamax either Pokemon. If I get a Spore into the right slot, that's honestly huge. Ah, it's just, it just feels so bad to miss an Origin Pulse against a Calyrex that was switching in pre-Dynamax, but... That's, you know, the risk versus reward of using Origin Pulse. It was by far the best option there, though, so I don't regret it. Okay, I'm going for Origin and Spore and a Calyrex here. I swear, if this is a Chesto Berry Calyrex, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, okay, at least that's not buried. Spatial Ren. I don't even know if this KOs Kyogre without you having a special attack boosting item. Okay, it still does get the KO. Uh, this next turn is such a big deal because it's like, I can just bring out Evil Tall now, right? And it's like, I can just Dynamax Evil Tall and then Spore into Palkia. So I have a two-thirds chance of coming out of the turn, like, in an incredible fashion. I could go for the slightly safer play, which is Rage Powder with the Moongus. So basically, like, the, the question here is, do I want to go all in this turn? I mean, the other thing is, does a Hailstorm even one-shot Evil Tall? 
I'm, I'm willing to go all in here, because I, I think if they stay asleep and stay in with both Pokemon here, it's such a disaster. So even though the Lum was cool, okay, they switch out maybe into their own Amoongus. Into Porygon. Like, they, they actually have no Amoongus answers right now after the Lum Berry. So this turn is so critical. Like, do they just Dynamax Calyrex Ice Rider and say, you know what, I'm going to go for it? No, they're not going to. Okay. Uh, the problem is that Incin is such a useless last Pokemon for me now, because I like mainly brought it to deal with Calyrex Ice Rider. That's one thing I've struggled a little bit while using this team, like figuring out who the best fourth option is. Because I always feel like I need one Pokemon to deal with one, one Pokemon to deal with the other. So, we'll see. This is why some Calyrex Ice Rider Palkia teams run Pal um, Feedy now, by the way, because Amoongus is just such a pain to deal with. And they stay asleep. Okay, that's incredible. Uh, even if Max Darkness doesn't KO, I think a Pollen Puff should finish it off, but this is Life Orb boosted Max Darkness. Sweet. And this is why I felt comfortable leading Amoongus, right? Like, the idea of Amoongus plus Kyogre is like, what's the main thing I can deal with Amoongus on my opponent's team? It is probably going to be the Palkia. Or sorry, not the Palkia, the uh, Calyrex Ice Rider. But the only thing with Calyrex Ice Rider is that you're relatively weak to Water Spot and Origin Pulse. Like, those can two hit knock you out if you're not, um... And they bring out a Lecky, okay. Yeah, I mean, they are in just such a bad spot right now, but I have to obviously respect late game Palkia. Um, especially because, like I mentioned, Incin is really useless for me here, and I you now feel very bad bringing it. Uh, I mean, Amoongus sporing into a Leki is pretty safe. I'm also down to just go for the KO onto a Leki here. Uh, okay. I mean, you would think a Leki protects, right? We'll see. Okay. I mean, the reason I'm so surprised about that is because, like, that's your best offense. And now I just maybe KO Palkia because I'm physical evil tall here. That's the strength of physical evil tall. Like, oh, I, I, maybe special evil tall would also get the knockout there. I don't know, but that is so surprising to me. This is why it's like if you're using a team that likes to be slower paced, having Amoongus answers is very, very, very important. So like I mentioned, Tapu Fini is sometimes seen. Taunt is obviously an option as well. Okay. Well, at least Instant maybe now has a little bit more value for us. Still wish I had Rillaboom, but it's fine. So it's the last one in Trick Room right now. Um, we only saw Volt Switch from Aleki on turn one. The only thing, like, the main thing to watch out for here is Ally Switch and then Dynamax Aleki, in my opinion. So, like... I'm down to just Max Darkness Aleki and then Rage Powder. Because especially if, if you don't have, um... Hmm. So they don't choose to Max there, which, which I get, but the thing is now I do get a Max Darkness through the Protect. And that's actually a very significant damage here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that literally just did 50%. <laughs> I wonder if Sucker Punch honestly just KOs it right now. Even with them being Lumpalkia, like, in fact, them setting up Trick Room only hurt them in this game, I think. So Trick Room finally expires. Uh, I still haven't seen Porygon's moveset, so it's like, Ally Switch is the main thing I'm worried about, right? Uh, if you set up the Electric Train, I can't Spore the Aleki, obviously. I mean, here I think I'm down to just Foul Play the... Does Foul Play KO? If you Dynamax? Okay, I'm down to Sucker Punch and uh, Rage Powder here. The only thing we lose to is if Aleki has max Airstream, but I think the odds of that are incredibly slim on their team composition. I guess you can max Porygon as well, but I don't think that's that scary. 
Let's see. Yeah, I mean, their Dynamax was just really late in this game, but once again, it's like because I brought Incineroar as my fourth, uh, my Pokemon selection didn't end up being perfect here, and that may cost me a little bit because it just doesn't do very much right now. And if there's no ally switch, then, right, Sucker Punch um, can maybe just KO. That's a physical elect a physical evil told <laughs> I mean, this this game demonstrated the strength of Aleki plus, um, or sorry, Amoongus plus Evil Tall, and the last game was Aleki plus Evil Tall, so Porygon finally wakes up. But yeah, I don't think they even realized that we were physical this entire time, and I wouldn't blame them. If I were going up against this, I also wouldn't expect it. So... Now we can just do a Wing Beat into Porygon, Spore. This is a good example, though, of a game where we'll probably end up winning, right? Okay, well, we'll won. Uh, we have won it, but... There's a big question mark, right? It's like, it's like this game could have played out very differently if my opponent didn't give up Palkia, because I think that was the best max option. So I think their better line to take was Protect Aleki and then sacrifice it to bring out Palkia, then Dynamax it. And then if they do that, like how actually do I beat Palkia in the late game? Because it's like, I don't have that much good damage. And so Rillaboom would be the adjustment that I would make. And I, I didn't bring Rillaboom into this matchup. So even though we ended up winning, it was like, okay, we won because I had such an early lead. But if I don't get that lead, then uh, the late game becomes a lot harder. And so this is why it's important to think about your adjustments and like how you would uh, choose different Pokemon, even if things like went really well for you. Because I think Rillaboom would have been a, a lot better for us in that matchup. But I mean, that, that game was just amazing for Evil Tall, right? Like it literally one shot Calyrex Ice Rider. We did get a little bit lucky, let it stay to sleep there, but you know, two thirds chance. So I was willing to take that gamble that turn because I felt like if we got that turn correctly, it'd be nearly impossible for my opponent to come back. Um, and that was the case. So that turn went well. The Evil Tall one shot the Palky on the switch in, you know, Sucker Punch then ended up KOing. Like, we went Max Darkness in a Sucker Punch to KO an Aleki led a Dynamax, right? Which was amazing. So, I also thought that it would have been better for my opponent to Max Guard Aleki just to guarantee that you don't take any damage with it at all um, that turn, but because they didn't, we ended up punishing for them, uh, punishing them as well. So, yeah, let's look for one more. Third game here, and it's Kyogre Zacian. Okay, with Galarian Moltres, Wims, Instant, and Porygon. So they have Trick Room and Tailwind, which scares me a little bit because I lost against that uh, when we played against Now Ego a couple of episodes ago. So, Physical Evil Tall and Aleki feel really strong here, but I have to weather the storm of Tailwind. One of the things we can do is just deny the Tailwind through Fake Out. Something like Rillaboom and Evil Tall allows me to Fake Out Whimsicott and Max Airstream. Rillaboom Evil Tall is pretty powerful here. Kyogre in the third. I feel like it... I mean, they do have a Zacian, right? So it's like Incin just to intimidate Zacian can be worth it alone. But I think Aleki is also worth considering. Oh, also one thing I didn't mention is like I could use Fake Out and then just Tailwind with my own Evil Tall in turn one. Uh, I'm debating between Aleki and Ensign here, basically. Okay, I I'm, I'm actually going to go with Ensign here. Like, Aleki is more tempting because it has Focus Sash, and then because, like, we both have Speed Control here and Tailwind, um, Aleki can Electro Web to drop my opponent's speed, but I, I think Zacian just either with Behemoth Blade or Play Rough pressures the uh, Evil Tall a ton. And I don't like that. And like neither Rillaboom nor Evil to actually do like significant damage to Zacian. Yeah, that's Zacian and Moltres. Okay. <laughs> that is so cool, but it's also very trippy for me because I'm like, wait, isn't it Fire type? But no, it's Galarian Moltres. That that's actually really confusing. <laughs> no, that's very cool. Um. Okay. So. Zacian's Behemoth Blade here is obviously pretty scary. And then, like, they could max Galarian Moltres and just Airstream Rillaboom right now. So, I don't mind switching out into Incineroar. Ah, this one is tricky, because... If I Dynamax and max Airstream, then they'll just outpace me with Zacian the subsequent turn. And that's pretty bad. Yeah, this is a nice lead. 
See, Aleki would have been the answer here, right? But I didn't feel great about it into Whimsicott and potential fake-out pressure early on. So, I went for Tailwind. Maybe Moshros doesn't Dynamax, which would be pretty good here. Um, yeah, I, I just like, I, I feel like if I max Evoltal, I don't actually get that much out of it. Choice Scarf Hurricane? Whoa. Uh, is that a crit or does that still KO? Oh, wow. Uh, okay, I need to do the damage calc on that because I was did not think that would get the knockout. And if we get Tailwind up there because they didn't Dynamax, things may have been okay. But things are not okay anymore. <laughs> uh, it's actually... Really frustrating because if I Dynamax Evil Tone Airstream the um, Moltres there, that turn actually would have worked out decently well. Wow, Choice Scarf Galarian Moltres, very cool. That actually is a pretty big issue for Kyogre here. Huh. That's awesome. That is so, so cool. So, yeah, like if I knew my opponent was leading this, the obvious lead for my end is Aleki plus Kyogre. What does Aleki plus Kyogre struggle against? Even if they go like Kyogre Zashi and Whimsicott Zashi and Whimsicott Kyogre, Whimsicott Moltres, none of those are that bad. So I think I just missed the best lead here in Aleki and Kyogre. Like, not only is it good against my opponents currently, but it's good against everything else. So, hmm. Okay. Um. I mean, how in the world do I win this now? I know your Scarf on Moltres, or I guess you could be incredibly slow Zashian. Okay, Zacian switches, maybe into Kyogre. Eh, Porygon too, I'll take that. I'm curious if Moltres Dynamax is here. I think that's the correct play. They don't Dynamax. Okay, that's actually huge. And I'm faster. Like, that literally just opens the game back up, up, back up for us. Especially because they brought Porygon rather than... Mm, Whimsicott. So I can actually outpace my opponent right now. I, I just really didn't expect neutral play rough to KO Evil Tall, but maybe I'm just too used to playing with very bulky Evil Tall as well. And so I just made, missed, like, estimated that damage calculation. So that's one I'll want to do after the game, because that's obviously incredibly important in this format. <clears throat> so Kyogre switches out. I have Real Boom as my last one, so that's obviously very good into their Kyogre. The question is, who do I Dynamax in this game? Like, I think I want to switch out into Rillaboom here, Dynamax my Kyogre, and then Geyser into their Porygon. Because then the thing is, I can get a base 150 Geyser into Zacian as well, and I have dual fake out pressure right now. I feel like their team had, or their, they, they did not cover for uh, Aleki plus Kyogre in this game at all. So, the, the two things that I was nervous about with Aleki and Kyogre was, like, Incineroar. I, I didn't need to be worried about Incin, I think. Because, like, yeah, you can fake out Aleki, but then what? I can just protect Aleki turn one. The, the main thing was Whimsicott. It's like, okay, like, Aleki Kyogre wants to outpace my opponent, but if they just go Whimsicott, they can set up Tailwind. But then the thing is, like, Whimsicott plus one Pokemon, right? Okay. Um... Yeah, Whimsicott plus one Pokemon. So it's like, does that one Pokemon actually threaten both Kyogre and Regieleki simultaneously? Not really. I guess the problem is if you go Whimsicott Zacian, uh, turn one, Tailwind, play rough into Kyogre. There's not that much counterplay to that other than me switching Kyogre out for Incineroar. Okay, no ally switch, so that's good. I wonder if it was con like worth it to consider Max Lightning there, but then it also changes the terrain, which I really don't like. They're gonna go for- ooh, but they changed the terrain now. Hmm. Okay, we took that pretty well, though. Took that pretty well. So now what? Zacian comes out. Uh, the fake out onto Zashin is so obvious. Man, would I have been better off if I just clicked Water Spot last turn? No, I don't think so. Because I don't think, like, maxing Rillaboom solves much here. 
So one big question here is like, do I want to just fake out plus Geyser Zacian? That's such an obvious play. That like I could Grassy Glide and Max Lightning their Kyogre right now instead. Alternatively, I can switch out my Rillaboom into Insin. Ooh, I'm kind of down for okay. Because I think I can survive another Max Lightning. So the idea is I switch out, I Geyser. If you don't protect Zacian, well, you just faint. Uh, I guess, yeah, if you don't protect, you faint. And if you do protect the next turn, because my Kyogre is, should be faster than their Kyogre, I can just fake out Geyser, their Zacian again. So, like, having dual fake out pressure right now is incredible. I wanted to go Glide and Thunder into Kyogre, but there's a lot that can go wrong with that play. Okay, they just play rough. Cool. So we should one-shot Zacian here. And then it's a, let's see, cool. Now it's, a, yeah, if you KO Kyogre, it's a 2v1. Okay, they go for Geyser reading uh, into the switch, maybe. But like, that's okay with me, right? In fact, I actually prefer that because now I just get Rillaboom out for free. Ugh, you know, the only awkward thing here is that like, they can change the train. It's my last turn. Like, I mean, obviously this turn I can just go Grassy Glide, Max Lightning. The problem... Do they Max Lightning here? Do you Hailstorm me? Because, like, if I protect here and they don't Max Lightning, Grassy Glide just KOs Kyogre next turn, right? If I were them, I would Hailstorm personally. So, like, I actually want to protect here. Uh, the problem with the protect play is that they just max lightning Kyogre. Like, I could obviously just grassy glide max lightning their Kyogre as well, but if their Kyogre is protect, actually, max her would be fine. That's not the problem. Uh, the problem is if glide plus lightning doesn't KO their Kyogre. So, I actually am going to protect here and uh, geyser. I just don't know how bulky they are, and I'm really worried about, like, very bulky Assault Vest Kyogre. And if they go for Hailstorm here, the game's immediately won. And So it's like, do they go for Thunder, Max Lightning? And even if not, like, I'm not sure they can one-shot Rillaboom. Yeah, perfect. Oof. That felt good. <laughs> At least I think we should win now. Like... It's really tough for my opponent to feel comfortable clicking Max Lightning at Kyogre, right? Because it's like, if I do just go for Glide plus Lightning, um, then how are you going to KO Rillaboom the subsequent turn? Oh, it's actually a speed tie between our Kyogres this whole time. Whoa. So they actually are just max speed. Interesting. I did not expect that. Okay. Um, fortunately, like, the speed ties didn't end up coming, uh, like, didn't, they weren't relevant in this matchup, but it could have been, right, which is kind of scary. So this was the endgame scenario I was worried about, right? Like, if they had one-shot my Rillaboom and, like, the Kyogre actually survived, then I'm just locked in with the Kyogre at 40 HP with Water Spout, but now Grassy Glide just guarantees the KO. And with Miracle Seed, yeah, there's no chance it can survive, especially because it's max speed as well, so... The lead was really scary, and I need to do that Zacian damage cut, because like I said, that kind of caught me off guard. But overall, um, yeah, I'm glad to highlight that you don't need to just rely on Evil Tall to win with this team, because Evil Tall actually just fainted for nothing, right? But in the end, uh, we were able to mount a comeback because Kyogre with Water Spot and Choice Scarf is just an insane combination. But yeah, did not expect the Galarian Moltres, definitely did not expect the Choice Scarf on it either, so that was pretty interesting. Uh, I would have thought they'd be max speed to like outspeed max speed Kyogre, so I was kind of surprised that they weren't. Um, oh wait, are they base, it's base 95 as well, right? So is it may have been a speed tie there, actually. Um, I gotta double check that. But yeah, let's pull up the Zashian damage cut, because I'm curious about that. So you can see this is one of the downsides of running no bulk evil tall. Uh, it's 81.3% chance to get a one-hit KO with play rough, and that's from Jolly Admin as well, right? So yeah, the reason why I was expecting to survive is because I'm used to using, like, bulk evil tall. So you can see here with max HP, it's actually a very slim chance to one-shot you, but it's basically a roll that's almost always in your favor. And so... Uh, this highlights the difference between EV spreads, right? Obviously, to run an offensive, uh, physical Evil Tall, you want max attack and max speed. 
so you can outpace everything and just do as much damage as possible but it does come at a sacrifice right and so yeah that's honestly a helpful calc to know because i, I just did not know this off the top of my head and because i'm so used to playing with bulkier evil tiles uh, i figured we had a decent chance to survive there but the chance was not decent at all it was literally you know under 19 percent so yeah it's a good lesson to learn there and this is all like it's so important to learn damage calcs especially when you try out new teams uh you're not always going to get it right sometimes it'll cost you during a best of one battle but that's fine right what's important is like building up your knowledge base so that the next time i'm in this scenario uh i, I can play it more confidently because i at least know what to expect so yeah that's going to be it for this one. So thank you to TSL Tane once again for the team. Thanks to you guys as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. Hope to see you at the Indianapolis stream this weekend, and I'll see you all soon. All right. Peace.